find out what AI couldn't do on this episode of Graphic Metal. Metalheads, welcome to Graphic Metal, where metal is celebrated with design in mind. Today, we are reimagining Deicide's latest album, Banished by Sin, aka What AI Couldn't Do. Banished by Sin was released on April 26th of this year, 2024, so just a little over a month ago. Graphic Metal already did uh, an extensive review of the album back upon release, which we'll add the, the link to the description below. But to give a quick update, Deicide is a death metal band from Tampa, Florida, who started back in 1987, initially as Carnage, followed by Ammon, and then uh, eventually sticking to the band name Deicide in 1989. And are basically part of what's considered to be the second wave of early death metal of the death metal scene. So think right after bands like Death and, and Morbid Angel. To most, including yours truly, their first three albums in self titled in 1990, Legion in 1992, and Once Upon a Cross in 1995 are considered to be their best albums. More than that, though, they also are considered to be their best and, one could argue, only good album cover designs. Those first three, with the, the later two in particular, being phenomenal and innovative works of art. But for unknown reasons, that would be it. Over the next nine albums in a row, it seemed like they were trying to one-up themselves as competing for in the running of being the, you know, having the worst album designs with every preceding uh, disc, which leads us to their most recent and without a doubt, the most controversial Banished by Sin. At first glance, you think it was almost like a return to form. After all, this one marked a significant change in like art direction and at least showed them putting effort into, into this one. At bare minimum, it does a great job of grabbing eyeballs. But the ironic twist in saying that they put effort into it is quite funny as it turns out that the design was created with the support of our friendly neighbor in AI. Uh, more specifically, as reported by Glenn Benton, who is one of the you know, two founding uh, members of the band, the principal writer, bassist, and lead singer, uh, that he used the help of Photoshop AI to create this design. Now, in Glenn's eye, he thinks he has done nothing but used modernized techniques, which he reminded everyone is exactly what he did all the way back in 1992 with Legion, and that he considers to, you know, him to, to have achieved their goal in trying to, well, stir the pot. Regardless of the intent, to many people, we feel like Glenn crossed the line, going so far as to say that he took on the literal representation of the theme that the band tends to go for, and almost like he's become a demon sent to try to destroy, well, art and creativity. In other words, the consensus is that they should have used their money and brand recognition to, oh, and as a voice to be sounded and heard by an actual designer. What can we say about 
<laughs> other than the, it's you know it's 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 a very fascinating thing it's like for such a brutal style genre of music of metal let alone death metal the community you know at the end of the day are big softies and very protective of among other things art which is great right user uh king king diamond scream commented when we kicked off this metal reimagined series a couple weeks ago when we reimagined Metallica's 72 Seasons, which I highly recommend checking out if you haven't yet already. Just go to our Graphic Metal YouTube channel and look for the Metal Reimagined series via the homepage, which for those of you who are not familiar, is a series where Graphic Metal takes a band, album, song, etc. and reimagines it. Graphic Metal style, of course. The purpose is part fun, creative, and imaginative, right? And also part informative, educational, and illustrative to provide as like an example or guide of great effective design communication that all bands should strive for as design and branding should never be overlooked and is such a critical aspect of success of any industry and, and music industry is no different. In case you are wondering, I am Veer Von Wright been a designer for well over 20 years now and have had the good fortune of you know designing for a myriad of companies from small to uh to large it just happens to be that i'm also a giant nerd for all things heavy music hence this channel and the moniker graphic metal but enough about me Let's get to reimagining the album cover artwork for Deicide's Banished by Sin. <laughs> Their best album cover design was 1992's Legion. I wanted to take the essence of that style and bring back that simple ge 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 yeah, geometric shaped approach to pay tribute to the band's once praised past. But at the same time, as reported by Glenn, they clearly wanted something bold and you know, grab your attention and stir the pot, so to speak. Uh, so we'll account for that too. And last but not least, one is something that represented the album, a title and theme and uh, of the specific album. You know, kind of an important thing to do. Right? <laughs> All right, so we have three key goals that we have to account for. Be simple and focused on geometric pattern shapes, be bold and grab everyone's attention, and three, set the tone and communicative, communicate the theme story of the album. Thankfully, Deicide make that third one really, really easy because let's be honest, they've had the exact same theme essentially their entire career, which, is basically hating God, right? <laughs> In this case, more specifically, it's a demon that's being, you know, tortured, banished by, oh, God. Simple and straightforward, right? Again, thanks, DSI, for making that part, you know, pretty easy for me. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I did was sketch out some demons. But remember... The first key goal was that the finished product should be very simple. Uh, so what I did was strip away as much detail as I possibly could and only leave, left the elements that would were key to communicating the figure being a demon. Which means that a head 
slash skull-like shape with, you know, horns and some evil, you know, sharp-looking teeth. That should do the trick, right? Next, I need to convey the theme of banishment, right? At first, I plan to take the demon head and blend it in with another abstract pattern to represent hell. And to, you know, that, that most of the observers that would see it would see just like this fiery pit of hellish-like pattern. But if you looked, you know, with a keen eye closer, there's the optical illusion that there is a figure, a demon buried within it. Hence the, you know, banishment kind of like abstract feeling. But I was having a difficult time creating it in a way that I felt like it was working. Uh, so I decided to scratch it, that direction anyways, and started to brainstorm other approaches. Shortly after, I got inspired while attending a concert that concert was with Soen. A progressive rock band, a hell of a show. Uh, from for the, the bands from, from Sweden. I highly, highly recommend seeing them if you get a chance. I'll do a video about it because it was amazing, fantastic. Uh, it, but I, it was at a, a venue that I've never been before. And they have like these like giant, creepy chandeliers hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> combination of them, the lighting and the shadow it created on the side walls got me to like, imagine this abstract shape and it kind of felt like almost like a vortex or wormhole energy pulse like force which got me to wonder about instead of trying to combine two different patterns or the patterns with the demon thought why not create this this over this you know this this other image and like just overlay it on top of the the demon that way it uh you know kind of feels like this this energy force uh that's you know like attacking or pushing this you know demon which you know basically Therefore, makes it feel as if it's like, you know, God, you know, sending an energy pulse and, you know, pushing and, you know, banishing uh, the demon to, well, the underground hell, right? I did a, a few rounds of this new pattern shape, initially sketching out this chandelier that I got inspired by. Uh, but continued to play around with it and, and merged it with concepts of like black holes and just energy waves and, and f forces and, you know, that kind of feeling of, of movement and energy. Once I got something that abstractly felt like this, this energy blast, I uh, brought it in and overlaid it on top of the demon. At first, I used a gold-like uh, color as to match with the palette that they themselves, DSI, did with theirs. I, I, at first, I always try to, to, to keep it as similar to what they were trying to go for. But uh, then I had the idea of actually using um, a different a color, a strong blue color, which in return can like abstractly represent God from above, you know, hanging out in, in, you know, in the clouds and sky, right? Which is blue, right? Heaven, so to speak. Uh, and, to, and then therefore to, you know, like juxtapose that 
uh, by keeping the demon figure in black to kind of make it seem like it's, you know, burnt to a crisp, supposed to be by this blast. And because it's, you know, being enthralled by, in, you know, inflamed, right, by the, you know, the fiery pits of, of hell. So therefore, by association, kept the background color um, red to represent hell, right? Uh, bam. Done, right? I mean, I, I, I believe that this fulfills all three key goals. It's simple and focused on geometric pattern shapes, a la kind of like Legion was. Be it's bold and you know immediately gra grabs everyone's attention, and it sets the tone and communicate communicates the theme and story of the album. You know, God banishing you know the demon to hell. All right. What I also love is that when the two objects. So the abstract layer is overlaid on top of the, the demon figure. There's a hidden element that if you look closely, you can see, which is that of an abstract religious, well, cross. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> which, again, obviously fits the theme absolutely perfectly and again love that it is not literal but something of like a bonus hidden meaning for fans you know to, to geek out on right these hidden elements are a trademark of mine and something that i strive for uh, because it's like a way of taking it that extra you know going the extra mile and being a fan and supporting other fans uh, also because I was inspired, you know, I, 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 you know, I grew up with, you know, being inspired by, by the likes of Derek Riggs, the legendary designer for, for the early stint of Iron Maiden. And it's something that he would always do. Uh, so I've kind of always taken that element of the greats and kind of carried it, pay, paid it forward, so to speak. All right. So design is done now for the album title and band. From the beginning, I knew I wanted to just have a smaller version of the DSI logo in one of the corners, right? And again, just to, to pay tribute to the same thing that they did with the, with the Legion album to keep with the similarities. At first, I was going to leave it as just that, alone, no album title. But I got inspired uh, by what, Dar uh, what Dark Throne did with It Beckons Us All, which felt fitting because they, the both albums were released at the exact same time. So I created a wrapped, like, old, creepy, Sarah-style font uh, that, you know, to lay it out with, with the, to create the, the title name, so to speak, of the album in the same kind of similar way that uh, Dark Throne did. Uh, and then... Uh, I, you know, just kept them as, se as separate on the, both sides, uh, which I think, you know, overall creates a nice type, you know, balance while at the same time, not too distracting to keep most of the attention on the, the, the actual artwork itself. Uh, okay. Front cover complete. Uh, for the back side, I wanted to have even more fun with paying off the you know dual dichotomy of heaven versus hell. So I looked, uh, so I kind of you know I took the pattern, added onto it, and placed it inside the shape of the demon head uh, to drive it home even further. Uh, I added uh, like an additional abstract representation of Jesus you know, being nailed to the cross, uh, you know, that sh this, the abstract shape of it to kind of just, you know, drive home like that religious kind of abstract, you know, feeling and shape. I think that it does a great job with, you know, continuing the theme uh, while at the same time just being a really cool, you know, design to, to look at, decided to, to wrap the track titles on the on the side, the pounding box side uh, of the sleeve, and then the rest of the the copyright information on on both sides of of, of the demon's mouth. Uh, I also used the same font I did for the album title as seen on the front 
for you know the the text you know to create the um uh the ti the album title uh use that for consistency purposes to make it feel like one you know packaged entity and there you go there you have it that's the um you know graphic metal reimagining deicide's latest album banished by sin uh i'd love to hear what you think uh you know, let me know in the comments. And uh, also, if you have any other suggestions, ideas of of what Graphic Metal should reimagine next, let us know. And just a quick update, still working on the new series that we're working on that's going to be bringing all the subgenres of rock and metal to, light, to life uh, in a really, really interesting way. Uh, an inspirational and educational way that I think is going to bring a lot of value to a lot of people. It's going to be wickedly cool. Uh, also, believe, believe it or not, turning it into a game as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm crazy and, and uh, I like to do ambitious things. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, still working on that. Also finishing up uh, the next episode is gonna. The next episode is gonna be actually the um, the celebration of the best picks Graphic Metal has for the months of both April and May. Because I still I've been slacking and I, and I haven't done April yet. So I'm gonna combine both April and May best album picks uh, that coming next. So until then, cheers and keep on rocking.